That is one big pile of shit. So we're at the side of Baalbek itself, and this is where we have the transition between manageable and these, which are huge. Smaller pieces help me the pressure and reduce the pressure from the big ones. Yes, exactly. Yes, sir. So it's the same thing? Yeah, the same thing. Here we continue our trend of statements that lack justification and implications from those statements that lack resolution. The idea Brian Forrester is trying to present is, hey, these are really big blocks. Maybe there's something unique or interesting about that. But he doesn't give you a reason to think that. He just wants to implant that nugget of information in your head. Truth of the matter is, small block, big block, all can be quarried the exact same way. It's just more difficult, takes more people, takes more time, but a large block and a small block still follow the same basic fundamental principles. There's nothing weird about having a very large stone in this wall. It's simply a really large stone. Now this column is polished so smooth and so round, and this curved transition between the curve and the flat is so amazing. It's highly unlikely that this could be done with hand tools because any sculptor, no matter how good they are, would tend to make a mistake of a dip or a bump. And even after thousands of years, there are no dips and bumps. Try and notice the language he is using here. He's not using precise terminology. He's not taking measurements. Instead, the granite is simply described as... It's so amazing with the implied implication being that this is somehow unique and different from what the mainstream textbooks would have you believe, that this was created by hand tools. He furthers this conversation with... Because any sculptor, no matter how good they are, would tend to make a mistake of a dip or a bump. Denying the fact that a dip or a bump, if you will, in the sculpting is more the result of the sculptor or some sort of time constraint than the tools involved. A power tool is nothing but an easier way to do what a hand tool would take more time doing. That's the only difference. A power tool does not increase your ability to resolve something, it just makes it happen faster. And this edge, what's left of it, is very sharp. That gives us very strong evidence of the possibility of ancient machining technology. For me, it's so important to feel the stone as I carve. which isn't possible with pneumatic chisels, dremels, and die grinders. The sharpness of the stone is not evidence. It provides no clue as to if hand tool or electric tool accomplished the goal because, I will keep stressing this, the difference is simply a time difference. You can accomplish everything with a hand tool that you can accomplish with a power tool. They're the same tool. And now we're going to get Stephen Mailer's opinion about the finish on this piece of cyanite. Oh my! Oh hooray! And here's a perfect smooth polish still on the stone, just like we see at Aswan. Yeah. And this is obviously from ancient Kemet. And it's obviously, it would be very difficult if not impossible to do that by hand because your, your hand is feeling that that would be a perfect circle. Perfect radius too, perfect arc radius, so it has to be machined. I'm going to continue to beat this dead horse as long as I have to. Hand tool, power tool, they both give you circles. And what the fuck is a... Perfect radius to create arc radius, so it has to be machined. You don't think these people in ancient times had the ability to make a circle out of something? A hand tool is required to form that most simple of shapes? It's preposterous. It's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Now, the Greeks and the Romans were able to do very beautiful work, as we can see here. You see that carving. Gorgeous. Is Brian about to shoot himself in the foot by making a really stupid ass comparison? <laughs> you tell me. But in general, they were only able to do that kind of work in either limestone or alabaster. When it comes to a material as hard as granite, 
or cyanite, which is what the, many of these columns are. Brian admits that the Romans had the ability to carve these very intricate designs with hand tools into marble, but are somehow unable to make a column out of granite. I don't know what the difference is. He's going to try to explain. Can't wait to see it. The hardness of the stone, because of the crystal um, content and other minerals, is about seven on what's called the Mohs scale, with the greatest or hardest stone that we know of being diamond at ten. So it's highly unlikely that they were capable of doing these this fine, yet perfectly smooth surfaces in the granite or cyanide. Brian knows jack shit about geology. Very apparent from those statements right there. First problem, the Mohs hardness scale is based on minerals, not rocks. A rock is simply an assemblage of many minerals. Granite and cyanite are not on the Mohs hardness scale. Second, Mohs hardness scale references how hard it is to scratch a rock, not how hard it is to break a chunk of the rock off. You can break a diamond with a hammer pretty easily, but you can't scratch a diamond, that's the point. Granite is pretty easy to break off with a hand tool. Sure, a softer rock may be easier, but that doesn't make granite not doable with a hand tool. Third, if I gave you your first two arguments, you would still be wrong. Silenite, the rock that you are marveling at its roundness, is a quartz depleted or quartz deficient version of granite. And quartz is the hard part of granite, that's a 7 on the most hardness scale. So the perfectly round rock that you're glorifying over is a softer version of granite by your definition. And your definition is wrong. The later cultures also were not able very well to work with that material, so we're left with no choice but to look at the idea that an even older culture was here that had forms of technology not available to the Greeks, the Romans, or indeed the dynastic Egyptians. A quick Google search will reveal plenty of granite sculptures from the time periods that he is suggesting it is impossible to do. It's a dumb theory. He provides no backing for it. He just says it, so it must be true, and he's wrong. Hell, how many videos have I showed of people chiseling away at hard granite rock with hand tools today? It's like in Peru and Egypt, we see obvious evidence of lost ancient high technology at work, such as this column here. Again, this is granite or cyanite, and it is, by feel at least, a perfect circle in a very hard stone. Brian Forrester has a background in sculpture. Why he doesn't realize that you could do this stuff by hand, I am unaware. Granted, his current job requires him to sell this myth of an ancient civilization and advanced technologies. I am assuming that's the part of it, but I don't know.